the thing that we're going to talk about today is called multimedia book review projects. And this is something that I've been doing with my students for a number of years. Now, just before we get started here, you don't need to worry about taking any notes whatsoever. Absolutely everything that we're sharing with you today, the slideshow, all the websites we'll be showing you, everything is going to be available to you on a links document. So you can just sit back, relax, enjoy the show. You don't need to worry about any notes. Everything will be totally shared with you. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to start by explaining how this book review project evolved in my teaching over a number of years. And once I've done that, explaining what we do, why we do it, how we do it, I'm then going to get myself out of the way and bring in the real stars of the show. And first, Honami is going to talk about the process of researching the book and blogging about the book for these book review projects. And then when she's finished that, we're going to have Aya, who's going to be talking about the writing and the editing process of the book. And then third, we're going to have uh, Mitsuki talking about the multimedia book work, explaining what we did with all of those. And of course, at the end, we're going to have a Q&A time, a discussion time, which will probably bleed over into the social. So if you do have any questions or anything like that, please keep them to the end or type them in the chat. I'm sure Grant or Barry or someone's moderating the questions in the chat. So let's get started. So the multimedia book review project. I first started doing this when I was teaching freshman university students. And these were students that I would have for the whole year. So they had a summer break. And being a particularly nasty, evil teacher, I felt I had to give them loads of homework over the summer break. So I assigned them a reading, a novel reading task to read over the summer break in English, 200 pages or 150 pages. And when they come back, we were going to work on writing book reviews on these novels that they had read. Now, there was a number of problems here that some of the students were bringing back handwritten things with paper and pencil, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they weren't really doing anything that was particularly related to what I see as 21st century learning skills. So I wanted to make the process more digital. And also some of the work they were producing in initially was a little bit simplistic. So I actually wanted to share some documents with them to help focus the work they were doing on these book reviews. So to do this, I kind of developed an app workflow and I'm going to come out of the slideshow in a little while and show you the apps that we actually used to get the students doing something that was not only literature based, which unfortunately, right way or wrong way, has an old fashioned approach, feather, ink, scrolls, etc. I wanted them to be doing more modern type stuff. So we developed an app, an app workflow. And the whole purpose of this project was to look at the learning skills that the World Economic Forum bring out every five years. And these are skills that they reckon people need to be successful. It's kind of related to the 21st century learning skills. And we can see these here. Look at the 2020 ones, complex problem solving, critical thinking, etc. You don't need me to read them all out. You can read them by yourself. The only one of the 10 that isn't covered to some extent in the book review projects is service orientation because we're not doing any business stuff. But my students are working in teams. They're doing collaborative writing. They have to make multimedia websites, slideshows, videos, etc. They have to negotiate who does what. They have to analyze the books, decide which information is relevant. In this project, they're doing nine out of those 10 skills that are recommended as future ready skills. So I wanted them to learn proper multimedia skills, future learning skills through this project. And most importantly, I wanted them to learn how to collaborate. Because really, writers always collaborate. We have friends that we trust to do peer reviews, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted them to bring this kind of element into their work. Now, just before we get into the second section, let me show you the kind of things that I'm talking about with the apps. So this document here, 
um, has all the links that I'm going to cover, all the links that the students are going to cover. Now, some of these we're just going to gloss over quite quickly because we don't have time to go through them all. Now, one of the things that was really pushing me to do the, the kind of tech stuff are these charts that some of you might have seen before. This is a chart for younger learners, 16 to 24, and it's related to how much ability they have in using ICT. And you can see Japan is the country of the OECD countries with the largest hashed mark, which means they failed the ICT. So Japanese students are a bit behind on that. This one here is junior high school students, a survey of teachers, how often their junior high school teacher, students use ICT. And again, Japan's the lowest of the list. Here's another one where how often students use computers at home versus in the classroom, obviously higher and to the right is better. And again, we can see Japan at the bottom. And this one here is the difference between 2009 and 2018. We can see how much countries have been improving the ICT computer usage, except for Japan, which has gone backwards. So these are the kind of things we're up against. And particularly this here, this news link, and I know Dan shared this on Twitter today. This was the Mombuka Gakusho meeting to decide how to make more use of technology in education. And every single person in this photo is sitting with paper and pen in front of them. No one has a laptop, no one has a device. Even the cable to plug things in is unplugged. So this is what we're up against. So what I wanted to do was to have my students use technology in a good way. So we've got a book review terms document here. If I bring this down a bit. This is the document that I gave the students to help them focus their research. And this is shared with you all if you want to use it and simplify the language to suit yourself. It's the things that we want the students to look at when they're analyzing literature. This one here is a guide to what each paragraph should actually be doing the things that we need to write in each of the paragraphs and some kind of background on how we put this together. For the blogging aspect, I use Feedly and we can see here I've made folders for some of my classes and we can see Honami who's going to be presenting next. We've actually got all of her blogs on here and she's going to cover that in more detail. Here's my YouTube channel, and that's linked there as well. And we've got a section here teaching students how to design slideshows, copyright free, multimedia content, dyslexic friendly fonts, colorblind, etc. We've got an academic writing section showing them how to use some of the writing tools that I'm sure Aya is going to cover. Um, this is a really hilarious literature review YouTube channel where a guy brings in a really funny way of making literature reviews accessible to people. It's hilarious. I also covered Sparks Notes and Cliff's Notes. And then we've got a bundle of writing tools, the academic word list, the Lex Tutor to check what percentage of these students are using, analyze my writing. And again, I know Aya is going to cover some of these. Then we've got Word Counter, which when you paste in some text that tells them how long it's going to take to read it out loud for their presentations. The Purdue Writing Lab, which is great. Paper Rater for improving the grammar. We've got Zotero for doing the referencing. Turn it in for checking for plagiarism. And there's also an app called Rewordify where you can paste in difficult text here and it translates it into simpler text if you actually wanted to downscale these documents to make them suitable for younger learners. I'm using these with my advanced English language class and their year nine students. So all of the links to all of these things, they're all in here. A detailed analysis of how all of these apps work is out with the scale of this session. But of course, me and my three experts, they're available for hire if you want to get us into your school or your university to go into these in more detail. You know how to get in touch with us. So all of that being said, I'm going to get out of the way. 
and I'm going to let the real stars of today's show take over. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Honami is going to take over next. Honami, you're on. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Rob. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm, oh, and first I'd like to share my screen. So my name is Hanami and, to, and I would like to um, introduce the contents for my section of the presentation. So these, this is what the sections will look like. First, I'll be talking about the book return. You need to returns. share your screen. Next, I'll be talking about, oh. is the screen shared? Oh, is it not, sorry, excuse. Sorry, do I just not? Okay, is it now? Perfect. Sure. So first I'll be talking about the book review terms. Next, I'll be talking about utilizing Feedly and lastly about utilizing Blogger. So during this year's quarantine in Tokyo, we students were given so much time to, uh, we were students were given so much time and everything shifted from online, uh, everything shifted to technology-based classes and assignments. And one of our assignments being to work on our book review terms, which we had done prior to reading the book we had all individually selected. So now I would like to show my book review terms and introduce the content that needed to be contained in it. So this is my book review terms document. And at first glance, it looks like a general document. And we introduce the book title, the author, the year of publication. And if we go a bit further down, there's things such as about the characters or about the setting, symbolism, and tone. And so on. But if we go a bit further up, um, one thing that I was unfamiliar to was the system introduced to me called the three B's. And this is actually one of Mr. P uh, Rab's personal creations. And it becomes pretty significant in the book review terms document. And what the three B's stand for are the background, the biography, and lastly, the bias. And the, bi uh, the background can be anything that was happening around the world or around the author's personal life when they were writing the book. And next, the biography can be anything, well, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's the biography of the author. And this could contain content such as maybe where they're from or what they do for a living, their experiences, and maybe about their personal life as well. So a lot of content could be contained in that. And lastly, the bias, can be anything from the background in the biography that may have affected the way the author and the book shows things. And, uh, oh my God. and um, by thoroughly researching and writing this part of the book review terms, I felt that it really assisted me when it came to time, when it came time to analyze our books individually. And because I had done the three Bs beforehand, I had an overall idea of what would happen throughout the book, as well as my own speculations, and I was really able to analyze it. And this actually gave me a unique and new way to actually view the work, view the book as I proceed to read it. And I felt that it was truly effective in analyzing my book properly. And another thing I'm going to be talking about is that how it was really convenient when working on our academic book review. And this is the guidelines that um, Rob handed out to us before we had to complete it. And the main section, there are four main sections to this document, which are the introduction, summary, critique, and lastly, the conclusion. And this is my own document, but as you can see, a lot of this is very, very long. And even for me, it took a really long time to revise and edit and um, perfect it to my liking. So, but two of these sections could be completely done in no time by just completing the book review terms. So it was very convenient on my part. And as um, you can see a bit of this, but um, this is the AWL and the reading level and paper reader. And these are tools we use to analyze our writing but I'm not going to be talking about that and I will be talking about that in the next part. And I want to go back and next I'll be talking about utilizing Blogger. So uh, utilizing Feedly. 
So Feedly is an app that was introduced to us and we utilized it when analyzing our books. And for example, this is one of my blogs that I wrote about the chapters of the book. And we were required to post a reflection post of each chapter. So that's what I did here. But I personally wrote the overall summary of each chapter. And after that, I wrote my genuine reactions to it. So these could be things such as maybe what parts I liked or what I thought could have been better, and maybe my predictions on what would happen in the next few chapters. And as I read others' blogs, I realized that some of them had a similar format. Some of them had written in a similar format as me. And what I thought from this was that you almost feel like you're reading the book with them as well. And personally, it enabled me to even analyze and enjoy the book that others had selected as well. Lastly, I'm going to be talking about utilizing Blogger. Now, this the title of the website initially gives away the intended use, but it's a website that we use to create our blogs and upload onto Feedly. And before using this website, I never really had a frequent chance or opportunity to be able to utilize my writing skills. And I can't say it was my most favorite thing in the world, nor was it my best area of skill. However, we've all been using we've all been using Blogger for about a year now. And I can certainly state that my fluency writing has excelled using Blogger. And compared to my first blogs that I wrote in the previous year, I'm now able to be I'm now able to express my thoughts more vividly and as well as stating my ideas out in detail. This is now my section done. Next, I will be talking about the writing process. Thank you, Honami. I'm Aya, and next I'll be talking about the process of constructing the book review by showcasing everyone three very useful tools that help me improve my essay. First, I'd like to share my screen. Before I start, before I do that, I would like to address that I have been writing essays in the past before. And I love writing essays. And moreover, I have done a similar type of assignment, a review assignment that Rab assigned us. So I really understand the whole process, uh, the, the whole concept of writing, the, of writing a book review. And with that being said, I would like to introduce you to the three tools that I found most helpful. First, I'll introduce the essay guidelines and how that helped me, to, motivated me to express my, more, my opinions more. Then I'm going to be showcasing Cliff Notes, a, a wonderful website that can assist students like me of their understanding of the book that they've chosen. Finally, I will introduce two tools, to analyze my writing and turn it in, both very beneficial in order to ameliorate your essay to, to you know, top notch. <laughs> so first I'd like to introduce you to the essay guideline. This is the essay guidelines that Honami talked about. And since she talked about the overall structure, I would like to focus more on the content. So when I was first assigned with this guidelines, something that I found very surprising was that we had to, we had to find material both for and against the author in order to present a fair and balanced evaluation. And so that was very different to a past review that I did that, that I wrote that was not in Rav's class, that wasn't in Rav's class. So I'm going to be showcasing that first. So this is in a review of World Dao that I did in sixth grade. And so it follows a similar structure to what Rav assigned us, but the main difference or something that I found very difficult was the fact that we had to choose either Roald Dahl being the most amazing author ever in the world or the, the worst author ever. Well, that can be, for, that can be useful for some students, but for me, I have many other opinions as well. So I was very limited in expressing my own, own thoughts towards the topic. However, Rav's guidelines really justify the point and, it, and by, sh by actually encouraging readers, <laughs> encouraging students to find material both and against the author, I was able to not only express my own opinions, but I was able to improve my essay to be very credible because readers would more likely to gain trust towards an essay that, that goes through a comprehensive analysis of the topic. 
and I'm going to be showing you how I use that in my own book review. So as you can see here, this is where I start my critique. And at first I write a negative point about the book. And second, and then after that, I write the main point, the my own opinions, which is that the book is very great and that is very recommendable. And the reason why we, we do, I do this is so that the juxtaposition created between the negative and the positive critique can make a lasting impact on the on your main points as it it goes as it is written in the end and people will more likely to remember things in the end and that's and this structure can really help the readers understand your main points and remember them next i'll be showcasing cliff notes a very one a wonderful website that can assist in your reading so the book I the book that I chose was The Plague. And at first glance, when I read the first few pages, I was very unsure of whether I could even finish the book because it's quite difficult. But, but since Rab introduced us to Cliff Notes, a site that really summarizes the storyline very well, I was able to I was able to check my understanding of the book. So this website was first used for teachers by teachers in order for teachers to, to, to check if the material that they're teaching about the book is correct. But now it's also used by students. So I, very, I truly recommend uh, this website for students who are willing to read challenging and classic books. So finally, I will be introducing you to editing tools, analyze my rating and turn it in very both very revolutionary tools that can help improve your essay in terms of grammar and sentence structure. So this is analyze my writing that Rav talked about before earlier. And this is a website that can analyze your text from a variety of criteria. So how you do this is you go to you copy the text that you want to analyze. In this case, it's my book review. And once you copy that and paste it onto Analyze My Writing, you can then click Readability and then Analyze Text. So the reason why I chose Readability is because that was the tool that the criteria that I found most helpful as it gives a number that gives the grade level of, of the predicted readers that are going to read your assignment. In this case, it's university and high school students. And by doing so, students are able to adjust their, their difficulty of their essays in order to fit the demographic you know, that they want. Such wonderful okay, and that really can help me because, because what's the whole point of writing an essay when the readers don't understand what you even, what you're, what your main points are. Finally, I'll be introducing you to Turnitin, a website that the main purpose is to connect students and teachers in order to some of their some of their submission of the work. But what I'm going to focus on today is a a feature called a feature that can check your plagiarism. So I would like to share once more. This oh can everybody see this thing called Feedback Studio? Okay, so this, once you submit your work, you can then get access to Feedback Studio. And the red highlights here, like here, shows you, uh, shows you where you may have plagiarized. In this case, I've quoted the, the information, so there's no need to worry about that. But by, being, by having a machine, accurately point out where you're plagiarizing, it really reduces the whole the the whole time of trying to search where trying to figure out if you've actually been plagiarized. So that can really help because plagiarism isn't an, the only problem that students have. It's a problem that can can be found anywhere, even in very social very in even in academics and adults. And 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 plagiarism can cause very severe consequences. So by having these websites and tools accurately point out where you've been plagiarized was very effective in improving my essay and having an essay that, that is not violating any rights. So in conclusion, I've talked about 
the essay guidelines, the reading assistant tools, and finally, the editing tools that all really help me improve my essay effectively and build the reliability between the readers and the writers. And now that my part is done, I'm going to pass the baton to Mitski, who's going to talk about the utilization of multimedia. Thank you, Aya. And hi, everyone. I hope you're still with us. And my name is Mitsuki Saito, and I am a junior high school student residing in Tokyo, Japan, just like the two others. And I've lived abroad for the vast majority of my young childhood, although I still am not a fully grown adult just yet. I have enrolled in copious different schools, both in and outside of Japan. So I think I have enough experience to kind of share my share and express my opinions and thoughts on the learning environment I am currently in. So let me just share my slides and okay. My part of the presentation will consist of work, walking you all through three crucial projects we worked on towards the end of the last semester and some are still a work in progress. Um, so the first one is presentation. We were, told, we were given the task to design and then deliver a presentation based on the academic book review Aya had previously in, introduced. We were taught an effective way to outline our entire presentation and how to construct a good slide that is dyslexic friendly and very visual. We were also taught about, we were also taught about nonverbal communication, such as facial expressions, which was kind of unable to be seen because of our masks, but body postures to show confidence and hand gestures. And he even told us to walk around the stage to engage with our audience and be active as a speaker. And also, he was, Rav also gave us tips on psychological aspects of a presentation, such as spiking up the dopamine level in certain areas of your presentation when you want to catch the attention of your audience, such as maybe before a significant proposal. And so I'd like to, sh oops, I'd like to show you the actual presentation slides I used that I created using Google Slides. Maybe this one's faster. Okay, so this is my title slide. I introduced a book called One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. And then here's an outline slide of what I'll be handling in the presentation. And here are all my contents giving a critique. And then lastly, a summary slide to sum up the entire presentation. Here is my conclusion slide that wraps up everything and clearly restates my main message. And then I have my references, photo credits, Q&A, and then one last thing. I'm not sure if all of you have heard of this one last thing slide before. It is a relatively new concept and, not, and knowledge that I obtained from Rab. So basically, the audience is paying the most attention to you when they are aware that the presentation is coming to an end. So bringing your most core um, like corporate pr proposal at the very end is so effective. And I can assure you that as an audience to my peer presenters. And then I have my thank you slide with a shortened link and a QR code that I'll be talking about next. So next I'll be talking about a literature themed website that we created using Google Sites. If I can open this. Okay, so this is the website, my section of my team website. And we were put into groups of maybe three to four people. And it was a really fun task because we were able to exhibit our and bring out our inner creativity as young children to create team logos and catch copies and make an appealing website. So this, the one of this is lying is my book title that I introduce, and here's an introduction about myself, about the author, a brief summary, and I also have the book review, an academic book review that I had talked about. And I also have my slides if any viewers want to review that. And I even have links if the viewer wants to purchase the book on their own. And then a book trailer, which I'll get into later. And so my team is called Novel Nor Norwell. Great alliteration right there. And um, because, maybe because of COVID, but for the 
predominantly our this task was in the, an individual task so being able to work with our peers like three to four other people was very exciting and a great news for us and not was because not was yeah never mind and as a final element i'll be talking about the video or more so the book trailer that we are currently working on unfortunately none of us are done creating it just yet so i am not able to share with you a completed video but so this is basically a book trailer maybe four to six minutes long and it's where we it's it contains all the information we want to recommend to a reader in a very entertaining way with all these cool effects and background music and in class, Rab introduced a few examples that her his colleagues, students made. Kaori, she may be in the chat. She may be in the call right now. And I joined her session earlier. So hi, if you're here. And so, oops, okay. And just like the three of us have explained to you today, Mr. Patterson's book review is no ordinary task. And every step and process of this entire project allows us to attain various skills and areas of amelioration. We were constantly put, it, put up to different challenges alongside the teacher and stepping into the burgeoning field of technology and 21st century education. This is one of the most exciting and engaging educational curriculums that I've ever been a part of, which kind of says a lot because I've been in several schools. And I believe that each of us students have in, immensely developed in his classes on the daily um, regarding skills such as writing skills, reading skills, critical thinking, cognitive flexibility, and video editing skills, and the list goes on. And as Rab ex explained earlier in the presentation, I'm sure we've covered a lot of the a lot of the skills that the World Economic Forum aims to do. And so just to slightly go off on a ta tangent, when we went on lockdown, when Tokyo went under lockdown earlier this year, our class, RAB's class, had no issues transferring and adapting to a more digital learning platform. And as a student, that was very convenient for us because when other students were overwhelmed with so much change. This was very smooth and comfortable, I guess. Yes. And with that being said, this brings me to the end of my part and the entire presentation. And I personally haven't had a decent conversation with Aya or Honami until this project. So I hope this was somewhat of a enjoyable workshop for you all. And just one thing from me before I go, I'd like to especially thank Rab to um, who had invited us up and who had invited us to present with him and genuinely being such a motivational teacher every single class. And I'd also like to appreciate the organizers for allowing us to present with our teacher today. And we are so, so incredibly honored. And these are our multimedia credits. Here are Rab's photo credits, Honami's, Aya's, and then myself. And we, all of our photos are CC0 domain. So right here in front of you is a shortened link that you can type into your search engine, or you can just zap this QR code. And on this will bring you to a Google document where we have links listed on this document that we mentioned earlier in the presentation, such as all the apps we handled, and even this very Google slide will be on there as well. So some of you, as some of you may be doing that, I'd like to open the floor to any questions you may have regarding our experience with RAV or this particular book review project. Oh, and I think he has this email here so you can contact him directly for any further questions. Do you have any questions? Okay, so this part, feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions. Wonderful presentation, very, you, you all act so much more mature than you probably are. Excellent job. <laughs> Thank you. You're making up for my immaturity. <laughs> <laughs> no. Outstanding. 
So the mic is open. If anyone has any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. Uh, girls, where are you going to apply to college? I know it's a way away, but I'm a college counselor and I always wonder um, what kids in your situation will end up doing. Will you stay in Japan or will you go abroad or you haven't decided? Mm, um, for myself, I have always, I've lived abroad for 12 years of my life, so I plan on I would like to go abroad for a university. Let me go next. Oh, um, I would also like to live abroad because I've lived abroad for over 10 years of my life. So yeah, I would like to live abroad. Um, for, for me, I've only lived in Japan for the, for the whole life except for travel. So I would also love to go abroad and learn and be in an international community. Well, depending on where you apply, I just asked because, you know, this presentation, it was a vetted presentation and you guys were part of it and you should definitely include that for your college resumes. So, uh, gr grade nine in the States is high school. So um, start it now and obviously you guys are all incredible students and you'll have other great successes, but start keeping track because in a few, before you know it, you'll be applying to schools and you'll be like, what have I done? Ninth grade is high school in a lot of countries. So please start thinking, please start making a list and congratulations. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. I would like to ask the three of them um, if they're an anomaly in their class or is it generally most of your fellow students are very good with tech skills? <laughs> um, I'd call myself, I'm pretty good with technology but I'm sure there are other students who are better than myself. We're in a pretty a flexible environment, especially in the English classes where students are free to, some, some teachers allow students to freely use their computers like what Rav is doing in his LE class. And so that I think that, that diversity is what makes the students here very technological. Um, I also think that as well. And since we've started, um, Raps class, I can definitely say, I can definitely say that I've been getting used to more like technological things. So I definitely think his classes are great. <laughs> um, can I just jump in there, Grant? Sure. Um, you know, you've probably already worked this out that for today's session, I'm just here to look good and pretty at the beginning. They're the actual brains of the outfit. Now, in terms of these classes, this is an IB class. So every student for the assignments, they get a score, a grade between a one and an eight. Eight is fantastic, one is terrible. And I've got about 30 students in each class. And, you know, they're eights, basically. And out of those 60 students, I've probably got about maybe eight to 10 students who would be those eight grades. Um, the reason as to why I asked those three is not just because they were really, really good, but the organizers of Okinawa JAL were absolutely terrible. And they set the date of this conference before all my students had finished their presentations. So out of the first half of the class, I had to choose the best three out of the first half of the class. And also, you guys were a little bit terrible in cutting my time from an hour down to 40 minutes, so I could only invite three of them rather than four or five. So shame on Okinawa. You missed the chance to see some more wonderful students. Well, we're going to hold you accountable for that for the next one then. Yeah. Sign us up. Anyone else with questions? George? I feel suitably humble, and uh, I'll... I'll just interject it. Rab, you're more than a pretty face, I gotta say. <laughs> this is this is incredible. And 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 so just just a very quick question. How on earth do you manage to to you know give all of your students, 60 students you're talking about with this spectacular amount of performance? How on earth do you manage to give them like feedback? It must take just a phenomenal amount of time. And I know you're so active in everything else. I just you're looking more and more like Superman to me every day. Judicial use of technology, um, using the, the tools and apps that are there. The feedback on their individual documents, they're doing a lot of the peer review. 
And then once they've finished and they've went through all the checks, what they're actually giving me at the very end has a lot of the errors already identified by the apps, by their peer reviewers. And I come in at the end and I give a global session. And what I do is I tend to take the students aside one by one by one by one in the room while the rest of the students are working on the next task, building the website, making the video or whatever, and giving the individual one-to-one -one feedback during the class time while the rest of them are working on other stuff. Now, some of my year four classes have 40 students in the class, not 30. Um, that's that's quite amazing that you use. Uh, George, mm -hmm. you got muted there. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that that's quite amazing. So, uh, I, I, what I'm hearing is you you are able to use some of your class time for that, and that unto itself is something that um, you know we'd like to hear more about at, at some point in time. I think in a presentation, but um, what uh, on a weekly basis, what how much class time does that entail? Like, how, well, uh, how, their, their how class, um, I see them twice a week for two 50 minute classes. Oh my and, goodness. and there are some weeks where it's down to 45 minutes if we have short periods. Over a semester of so uh, over a year. Many meetings? So there's three, three semesters. So we have uh, I would guess the first semester starts usually around mid-April to early July, mid-July. Then the second semester is probably late August, early September until early December. And then the third semester is early to mid-January until early March. Mm. I'm just, you know, just trying to compare it, like as Dan was saying about, you know, like, I mean, first year university students and several other people mentioned this as well. First even second year university students, often enough, um, when you're talking about English as a foreign language, Aya, Honami, and um, who is your third? Mitsuki. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, I mean, a lot of us were, were teaching Japanese university where English is a foreign language. So so our students like were, were quite blown away by how 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 amazing your your presentations were your language skills they're just you know just off the charts compared to a lot of the students that we see all the way through to like fourth year of university um and one quick point in that George, so, before dan's put his hand up they've been in my class all of last year mm, plus half well, of this year but the really interesting thing is Aya and Honami are in one class and Mitski's in the other and those they hadn't met each other until just under two weeks ago when I pulled them together for this project <laughs> incredible Dan? absolutely and then maybe David so Mitski, Honami and Aya you're so inspirational uh, for me as a teacher because um for the most part at least in the programs that I'm in I don't have a lot of choice over the curriculum I can't decide the tools that I want to use and the motivation of my students. Maybe you've heard this uh, from other students in other universities, but everyone treats English like a subject, like as if it was like math or something that you needed to get an A, B or C on. But when I watch your performance, I, I wasn't even so focused on that this was an English class or whatever, but that how much you were owning the content and, and the digital stuff and, and how inspired you were by, by doing all of that. Um, shifting over to Rab, I just wanna say, Rab, how much latitude did you have in being able to A, decide what you can teach, the way you've done it, and, and the tools that you're allowed to use in this particular school? Um, maximum latitude, because I didn't ask anyone's permission, I just did it. <laughs> Essentially, if you ask for permission, you're giving people permission to refuse your ask. So mm -hmm. I don't ask and I just do it. David? Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, but uh, we are about five minutes over time that the session ended about five minutes ago. Well, can we do maybe Beth's last question then because she just wanted to say something? No, I was just going to say at most IB schools, they really want you to use a full range of activities and technology. Technology is part of the curriculum, not what you have to do for technology, but including it is, is what you have is part of it. 
See, the problem for our school is there are cupboards with laptops that teachers can check out, but these laptops are really, really old, out of date, low battery life, the school Wi-Fi is not great. So I encourage the students to start bringing their own devices simply because the school's IT infrastructure just isn't there. And we're using all the Google tools, but the school itself is Microsoft 365, which is quite problematic in a number of ways. So in many ways, although the IB recommends that we do all of these things, the school doesn't always have the infrastructure that's necessary to do that. And a lot of the classes, the particular class I'm teaching these students isn't from the IB curriculum. Okay, um, does anyone have any more questions? No, no more questions? Okay, we're going to end by practicing what we preached. So one last thing, just before we stop for today, what we've covered today in this session is about the world of reading. But to hook the younger generation into reading, we have to get them doing beyond the reading, doing multimedia content. And we've just given you some examples today of how we've done that in my class with my students. So that being said, why don't you make a start in doing that same thing? We've provided you with templates and guides for how you should do this. Get started. Thank you all for listening and thank you all for coming today. Thanks. Bye.